We near the end of the first COVID year, a dark time of plague and dread-filled doubt, of fat men with tiny, soft hands wearing expensive suits, indignant that we dare question their lies and will not blindly swim into their tangled nets of bureaucracy, refusing to become yet another managed resource. But who knows when we may meet again? Mariners soon learn that each goodbye may be the last, so it is that I come with head bowed, humble in the distant presence of you, my peers, you watermen and women, fellow scribes, you singers, poets, historians, you philosophers, prophets, you priests. We each confront the mystery and lyricism of life at sea in our own way. Like running a hand line through stinging bare cold fists, brine softened, cut, then calloused, so that if all else fails us, we have our hard enlightenment to cling to. Those hands become nearly too work battered to hold gaffs or wrenches, hot mugs or pens, but hopefully at least two fingertips remain dexterous enough to scratch out our wonderful stories, until finally we arrive at our own lonely, inevitable epiphanies and conclusions, when our weathered faces will relax and shut as the final dusk settles, the sounds of the sea's music fading a final time. Then others will take our place, and may there still be fish and fisher folk to yarn about in that time ahead. Few of us have sat long in any lecture hall, blinking sleepily while the professor droned on about dangling participles, iambic pentameter, the proper sonnet or rhyming couplets. What a tragedy it would be to possess a piece of framed script declaring that we had successfully autopsied formal language and could by rote call out the names and works of all those recognized by others as notable wordsmiths. And all the while we would not have lived any adventure worth writing or singing about. No, we sat there while the spring sun burned in through the windows and watched as robins tugged worms from the pungent wet mud outside while the sea called from somewhere beyond, perhaps thousands of miles away. The wind stirred and fresh green leaves shimmered until finally we bolted for the door and never went back. We instead draw poetry and music from the simple daily facts of life, the aromas of sweat, of brine, of diesel fuel, and shit and guts and salmon and cod, coffee and bilge water, pine tar, tallow, blood, the coming snow. Some days you can actually smell the fish in the sea below. We accept wisdom and succinct eloquences of our fellows' four-letter words, which leave no doubt to their meaning, and may at times even have saved our lives. The taste of the air and the sea, the caresses and stabs of the spinning planet, clipped curses of sage mentors, one raised eyebrow often saying as much as any novel and we find inspiration within sleepless hunger the hot pain and cold regret of lessons hard won as we bend to our need and yes to our greed we have come to love the shape and meaning of boats and waves the ways of fish and sea and wind, the shared skills of those who are bound by the same passion, this knowing of water people. And from those raw senses, some of us find sacred energy to transform 
elusive mysteries into expressible words, and so we write from our hearts. As if spawning, we gather beneath our annual moon, joining from far reaches and mysterious depths to swim together briefly against the current, where we hatch ideas and express joy and indignity, pride, regret, love, loneliness, deprivation, affirmation. A fish is seldom caught by being chased with a hook. We know that, and do not conjoin for fame or fortune, but we simply raise our jars and celebrate our lives as people of the sea. Then, like the flashing fingerlings, when the flood turns slack, yet again we'll swim back out into the vast cold dark sea and vanish. <laughs>